just going to pray before I start. Father God, let my words be your words. Clear my mind. And Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name. Um, it's been a busy week. <laughs> um, as after Pastor asked me, I, I really had peace with it for a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> then that peace left me, and I was like, oh... Um, we just had deadlines this week and uh, stuff going on, and uh, so I was, you know, keep thinking in my head. Okay, God, what do you want me to say? What do you, what do you want me to do? Um, and I heard uh, talking about the gift of helps, which makes the church run well. And there are people with the gift of helps, but everybody can help. And it makes the church run smoothly. But um, I'm going to speak on something else. And I know I've spoke on this before, so sorry if you're going to hear some repeat. But um, uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to speak on prayer tonight. And um, when I heard this, I thought, oh, I did this before. I, I talked about prayer before. But is there not a better time than now to say this again? And the way our world is and the way the teachers and the schools are, and the way our government is, is there not a better time to be praying and praying in unity? Okay. Um, it's a time when we need to pray that God would come back into our hearts, in our families, in our homes, in the schools, in the Supreme Court, in the courts, in the hospitals, and in our government. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to be praying for our election. Are we doing that? Are we praying for our election and that God would have his way in the people that get voted in? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our our testimony. Dewey was too chicken to be up here with me. But um, Dewey and I were saved in uh, 79 and uh, like Jan says, from a bar stool to a church pew or however she says it. Um, I, I knew Dewey and he came over and um, we started to go to concerts. We went to the Doobie Brothers at, at Charlevoix. And um, one night, um, my sister's boyfriend witnessed to us. And he planted a seed, definitely. So um, they were expecting a lot from us after that. And the next weekend came, and we went out to a bar, and they were disappointed. And the next week we went out uh, to the Gables and um, we were just sitting there at the table and you know, I, I'm a people watcher. I like to watch people. I like to watch people dance and you know, the excitement and um, we both sat there and you know, I, I was always cold because it was cold in there and I kind of hugging the candle and we were just sitting there, and it was like, okay. It was like a veil was pulled off of our eyes. And the God thing about it was he did both of us at the same time. And we looked at each other, and we looked out on the floor and watched the way people were dancing. And, and it was just like, oh, my goodness. It just, ugh. So I looked at him and said, what are we doing here? And... He says, I don't know, let's go. 
And so that was it. We went from a bar to church. We went to a, a church that was in town. We both got saved. And that started everything. We, we got married. And um, uh, we had, I had Jamie already. And we had Sarah. And then we had Aaron. And then um, I wanted one more. On one more because our quiver wasn't full. <laughs> <laughs> and what is a quiver? Is it six or seven? I think it, uh, blessed is a man who has a quiver full. Well, I figured, well, we don't have that many, so I can probably have another one. But he was not in agreement with that at all. And so I talked to my pastor, and he says, you need to get up and pray. You need to get up early, and you need to bring this before the Lord and see what he does. So um, at that time, we had three children. I had a daycare with six children, and um, I decided that I was going to get up early, like maybe it was 5.30 or 6 in the morning, to get up and pray. So I started praying, and I asked God, um, I want one more. And he doesn't, but I can't change his mind, but you can. And it took, it took a couple months, and um, he changed his mind. Mm -hmm. So thus started my prayer life. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to speak about is all about my prayer life and how 35 years ago, 30-some 30, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. I started getting up and praying. Faithfully. Um, David was a man after God's heart. He praised him no matter who was watching. And um, sometimes we get caught up in fear of man and we don't want to be in front of people like this. <laughs> but David praised God no matter what. And um, praise and worship will bring you to the throne of God. It'll bring you behind the veil. It's a close and intimate relationship with him. And It brings us closer to him, and it takes time, and it's a sacrifice. Believe me, getting up at 5.30 in the morning, that was a sacrifice. So, um, in that, I'll read uh, some of the stuff that I have. The definition of praise is to give thanksgiving, to stretch out one's hand. Praise is remembering the good things that God has done to glorify, to worship is to honor and reverence and bow down. Praise and worship is the purest form of prayer. So sometimes when you, oh, there's another song, just remember that our praise and our worship is the purest form of prayer to God. <clears throat> when I was a young Christian, sometimes praise and worship came from my head. It wasn't until I came to a place of total surrender, and you, you all know when you get to that place that it's like, okay, God, I can't do this anymore. You got to do it. It's, it's just surrender everything. Um, after that, the praise came from my heart. Praise welcomes his presence in our midst. Every time you praise God, something changes within you. Every time. It changes your heart. It changes your situation. It changes your life, your mind, your attitude. It's impossible to touch the presence of God and there not be a change. 
The reason for that is that you are coming in contact with all that God is and that will affect all that you are. Praise is a prayer that changes everything. If you truly understand who God is, our praise would be unending and it could not be contained. Worship, worshiping God is a way we can pry loose from ourselves and make us stop holding on to the world and start holding on to him. God intends worship to restore us, to fill us, to motivate us, to bless us, and fulfill us in ways we never dreamed possible. And through the years, um, my prayer list grew, and I did see impossible things happen when I prayed because I was faithful. Praise becomes the very means of which God pours himself into our lives. It's not something we can manipulate God into doing. It's a gift he gives to those who have a true heart of love and reverence for him. Only those who put God first will uncover the hidden power of praise and worship. Worship is a state in which our soul finds true peace, rest, and purpose. And when we spend time in our praise and worship and seeking God and praising him, um, he will change us and we go deeper so that with your soul finding true peace and rest, if you haven't really um, uh, seeked him and found him, I guess you wouldn't really know what that rest or that peace feels like. But when you go all in, it's a it's a it's like being in his presence. It's a feeling that you can't explain and you don't want to leave. You could just stay there forever. God must always be the focus of our worship. Our worship in worship, you will experience God's love. He will change your emotions, he will change your attitudes and your patterns of thought. I don't know about you, but through the through all those years, my thought life was at one time a mess. It was just a mess. And um, I couldn't imagine being free from the thoughts that I had. Um, I just didn't think it was possible. And um, so I took one scripture at a time um, one was, I bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That, that takes that thought, I'm going to throw it in the trash. And I had to do it every time I got the thought. And I had to throw it away and throw it away. And it took, I think, about a couple months. And one day I was sitting there, and it was like, oh my goodness, I got peace. I have no thoughts in my head. And it happened. And I have been that way since that day. So you can get rid of uh, thoughts that um, they lead you away from Christ is what they do. But um, he will pour out his spirit upon you and make your heart open to receive all that he has for you. He will breathe life into the dead areas of your existence. He will infuse you with power and his joy. He will redeem and transform you in your situation. He will fill empty places, liberate you from bondage, take away your fear, take away your doubt, and grow your faith and give you peace. He will break the chains that imprison you. When, uh, when this church first started, uh, and we were meeting at Jan's house, it was small, um, God said, he spoke unity in our church from the very beginning. 
and he said that we were like a chained linked fence joined together and the one thing that breaks that chain link fence is off offense 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 uh, I don't know um, to be offended will break the links in your church and that is um, one of the devil's first thing I'm offended I'm not going to talk to her. I'm going to go to another church. That, his, that is his number one thing to do. He will lift you above your circumstances and limitations and motivate you to help others to find life in him. God wants us to praise him with a whole heart. To be a worshiper is to fall in love with God. The hidden power is, of praise is that the more you praise him, the more his love is released in your hearts and through your lives. Every day, we need to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Every time we praise him, we deepen our relationship with him. So time is a, spending time is a big thing. Once you have known the Holy Spirit's touch in your life, there is nothing more precious. Our prayers should be Lord enabled me to always resist the temptation of the flesh that would cause me to stray from your path you have for me and the more we worship God the more we will see his holiness his wholeness his purity and his goodness making us holy whole pure and good value your body because the Holy Spirit lives there God's holiness is beautiful when you worship him, the beauty of his holiness will make you beautiful. When you worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness, your continence will be changed to the change that happens in your soul. And it will be seen on your face. If you ever seen somebody that just got done praying and you can just see a glow about them, um, that's what happens. What about when you can't feel God anymore? Maybe he wants you to further, to find him, to look deeper, to search for him, to long for him. God makes himself scarce to see if you will pursue him. And that's what Pastor Joyce calls the desert. <laughs> when we praise God, a fresh, flow of his living water pours through our soul. If you don't sense him, if you don't sense his presence in your life, praise and worship him until you do. So it's all up to us. When we worship God, he makes us ready to go where he wants us to go and give us the ability to do what he wants us to do. The hidden power of praise, the joy of the Lord rises in you like a spring of pure water when you praise him. It is instantly felt. It is instantly felt in his presence. This joy comes from a source that never runs dry. And because of your strength, every time you praise God, the negative voices in your head will be silenced. You have to combat the thoughts with the word of God in prayer and praise. Because God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. And we take every thought captive that doesn't line up with the word of God. Speak the word of God and praise God even when the bad thoughts come. God has given us, given us a sound mind. The power of praise and worship can bring down strongholds. So this can happen in praise and worship. Um, not only when somebody is praying over you, this can happen in praise and worship. Um, he can take away our sadness, our hurt, our loneliness, rejection, hopelessness, and, and depression. We can trade our negative emotions in for the joy of the Lord. He is the source of all joy. Only as, truly, only as we truly worship God 
is our spirit released from captivity to soar into the presence of God. We can turn our sorrows into joy through singing praises. Every time you walk through a difficult time and maintain an attitude of praise and worship before God, you will find your faith, patience, and love become stronger and more established and more settled. He has a purpose for that storm in your life. And a lot of times when things are going great, do we run to the throne of God? Do we make time to pray to him? Um, sometimes that storm has a purpose. Those who heed are those who will walk in his presence. They will know him intimately as he will manifest himself to them. Worship softens and opens up your heart to the Holy Spirit's fresh infilling. You become more receptive to his will in your life. You gain the mind of Christ and the leading of the Holy Spirit. There is freedom that happens just being in the presence of God or people who worship God when their hearts are tuned in. Whenever you praise and worship God, things are shaken up around us. Chains fall off and we are set free. When we sing our praises to God for who he is and what he has done, our worship becomes the very instrument he uses to set us free. Praise silences the voice of the enemy. Mm -hmm. So you can hear the voice of God. Praise sets us up, sets up a mantle of protection around his people. Praise is an atmosphere through which the ad adversary cannot move. Worship keeps us from being controlled by our flesh. We will always sacrifice our joy and the fullness of all God has for us when we move in the when we move in the flesh when we have bad thoughts we should confess them and praise God when he when you lift up God in praise you are lifted out of the realm of the flesh and into the realm of the spirit when you worship God we open up channels through which God works most powerfully to defeat the enemy on our behalf. We confuse the enemy and weaken him to the point where he has to flee. When there is a season of peace and rest, use that time to build up and fortify yourself in the Lord. Study his word, communicate, pray, spend time in his presence in, pray, in praise and worship. Most of the information coming oh, from this book was... Uh, the Prayer That Changes Everything by Stormy Orton. I'm, okay. God gives us gifts to share. Don't keep them at home and use them. Okay. Um, through the years, uh, Uh, when when we got together, Pastor would get into the Word, and I would get into praise and praise and worship. But I eventually got into the Word. I go through the Bible, and one year I did this. I wrote down everything that resonated with my spirit, and I wrote it all down. And it's it's in a little thing, and it's about that thick. And um, so what I did was I went through the Bible and I picked out all the scripture that is going to help me through my life. You know, you might pick a different scripture, you might pick a different scripture, but I picked out scripture that pertained to my life. And I wrote it all down and I would pray it. So I prayed God's word. You can um, pray in different ways. You can pray in a in agreement with somebody, which is powerful. and But I use God's word to pray. And um, I didn't copy it from a book. I just wrote down the scripture and just, you know, with God's help, I put it 
all down in order and um, I started to pray this and at the very beginning when I started doing this it was like I couldn't even get through the first page without the anointing and God's presence just all around me and I remember um, sitting in the car with Jan and I did you bring your prayers yes I brought my prayers and we would start praying and I don't know how we got from I think we were in, we were in Grand Rapids I don't know how we got from Grand Rapids to Manistee because the power of God in the car was it was bouncing off the walls I was just like oh my but um that's what I do that's what gets me um, through hard times I, I pray the God of uh, pray I pray the Word of God how can it get any better how you know and um, one thing that I do is you know I find find a safe place in your house and for me it used to be downstairs until we started remodeling now it's upstairs and so I pray in there and I shut the door and you can do what you want you can pray you can sing you can holler um, that's my prayer closet and um, my daughter came home about a month ago and she said how come I always feel safe in this room and I said it's because that's my prayer closet and she said I thought so <laughs> so um, uh, I challenge you to go through the Word of God and write the scriptures that um, speak to your heart and start praying them and see what a difference it makes in your life. Uh, let's see, I have, I was going to bring more of my prayers, but I didn't. Um, but this was one that I picked out of a stack like this. And the reason I picked this subject is because I was cleaning my room the other day and I was doing a deep cleaning under the bed and everything. And under the bed was a Bible case with all these papers in it. And as soon as I seen it, I knew that something in there was what I was going to talk about because I wouldn't have noticed it under my bed before I cleaned. So um, I think a um, long, long time ago uh, when families got together, the father would always read a blessing over his children. And um, so I'm just going to pray this. I speak a blessing over your life. Declare God's goodness. A blessing is not a blessing until it is spoken. So when, you know, I read, I, I read silent, but when I say my prayers, I say them out loud because the devil can't hear what you're thinking. So if, you, if I'm going to pray this and I'm just going to think it, it's not going to do anything. You've got to say it out loud so the devil can hear, and it's going to change the atmosphere when you pray it out loud. A blessing is not a blessing until it is spoken. I declare that I am blessed with God's supernatural wisdom. I have clear direction in my life. I declare that I am blessed with creativity and courage and the ability and abundance. I declare that I am blessed with a strong will and a self and self-control and self-discipline. I declare that I am blessed with a great family, good friends, good health, and with faith, favor, and fulfillment. I declare that I am blessed with success and supernatural strength, with promotion and divine protection. I declare that I am blessed with an obedient heart. And, and I'm obedient because I'm here tonight <laughs> with a positive outlook on life. I declare that any curse that has ever been spoken over my life, any negative evil word that has ever come against me is broken right now in the name of Jesus. I declare that I am blessed in the city, in the country. I am blessed when I'm going in and when I'm going out. I declare that everything I put my hand to do is going to prosper and dis and succeed I declare that I am blessed and I just um, encourage you to speak the blessings over your children over your family 
over the city, over our country, and over our government. Amen. Amen. So, Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would seal this message into the hearts that are here and even the ones online. And I, I pray for a boldness, Father, because you have given us authority in your name to call down the things that hinder us. So, Father, I just pray that you would give everyone wisdom and discernment to know what to pray and how to pray. And I pray a blessing over the families in this church that they will be strong and the word of God would be prayed in, the, in their household and over their children. In Jesus' name, 